Hey, everybody. Thanks for joining us for our monthly leadership uh, podcast. Thanks for taking a few moments uh, to really lean into your leadership, uh, whether you're a, a leader with us here at The Well or at your local church, uh, at work or in your community, wherever it is, um, that you are stepping into new areas of responsibility. We want to make sure that you have the resources, the knowledge um, to be able to really uh, thrive and do the things that God has placed in your heart. And leadership can be really, really difficult, among other reasons, because uh, leadership involves uh, people, and people can be tough at times. And particularly when you're not doing it in a vocational setting, um, and, and people are really, uh, they are strictly on a volunteer capacity, it's particularly difficult to lead in those kind of environments because what we sometimes will try to use uh, to ensure people's uh, behavior, to ensure, ensure people's attitudes, to ensure people's teamwork, a lot of those things are not available for us. So we have to think about um, other ways to be able to inspire, to be able to encourage, to be able to affirm, and when needed, to be able to correct. And that's really what I wanna talk about uh, this month. I wanna talk about um, how we can um, make sure, ensure, that the things that we want, that the things that we expect um, are, are actually happening on a regular basis. And there's um, an old leadership axiom that says this, um, you have to inspect what you expect. In other words, it's unreasonable to assume or to want uh, people to do certain things, to be certain places, to grow in particular ways if we're not actually following up with those kinds of things. So uh, specifically what that means is that from time to time we have to have hard conversations. Now for a lot of people we avoid difficult conversations. Um, my wife hates conflict. My wife would crawl through glass to avoid conflict. She would put herself um, in frustrating, difficult constraints for extended periods of time rather than having to have a hard conversation. But when you do that, um, you inadvertently communicate to other people in your life and particularly on your team or in your group that those kinds of behaviors are acceptable, that they're okay, because if, if you don't do anything about it, then people assume you must approve of it. And so it's critically important that when things don't match the expectation um, that you're able to have uh, conversations about it, you have to inspect what you expect. In Acts chapter 15, verse 36, it says, after some time, Paul said to Barnabas, let us go back and visit each of the cities where we had previously preached the word of God and see how the new believers are doing. So what Paul and Barnabas were doing in essence is they were making sure that the gospel that they had preached, that the disciples that they had raised up, that the leaders that they had entrusted uh, were following through on all of the things that they had said. And they also understood that those new leaders were undoubtedly gonna face new circumstances, new situations that they probably hadn't um, been able to, to prepare them for. And so now that the church is in a new uh, level, age of development, a new place in its maturation process, that they were able to, to lean in and lend more leadership, uh, more development, more resources, that it would need. And sometimes that's, that's, it's as simple as that. Sometimes someone has stepped into an area, but they've run into some new problems or they've run into some new circumstances in their own life or in the team, and they just don't know how to overcome whatever it is they're encountering. So it's so important that we are routinely going back and inspecting whatever it is we have communicated that are our expectations. Uh, inspecting what we expect has all of these uh, benefits, right? Not only does it ensure uh, that people are, are meeting or exceeding expectations, but it also guarantees that they are not 
um, needlessly experiencing failure or, or uh, feel like they're just stuck in a cycle where they're not able to thrive. So not only are you going to be uh, helping your organization, your team, your group, you're gonna be helping those leaders continue to grow and develop and feel like um, that they are, are set up to succeed and you're ensuring that you're not doing the, the team or the members of the team or the organization um, harm. And particularly for those of us in the church, you're ensuring that we're not doing Christ harm or doing harm to Christ's name. So how do we do this in a way that's good? How do we have hard conversations in a way that's really um, healthy, that really is affirming, that um, is, is Christ-centered? Uh, uh, in Psalms, 8510, it says, unfailing love and truth have met together. So the truth, what we expect, and love, mercy, grace, all those things have come together. Righteousness and peace have kissed. That's how we want to think about this, that when we're having hard conversations, um, we're, we're communicating truth, but we're doing it in a way that is rather than um, criticizing someone, castigating someone, uh, undermining someone that what we're doing is is really um, empowering them, that is really equipping them, that is ensuring um, th that they have everything that they need and that we're doing it from a sincere place of concern for their good and the organization's good and of course Christ's good as well. Um, so the first thing we have to be is we have to be clear and kind. It's a great leadership way to think about that idea of truth and love or righteousness and peace. We want to be clear, but we still need to be kind. And here's what I want you to know. Being clear is being kind. And the reverse of that is true. To be unclear is actually to be unkind. Um, years ago, when I was much younger, um, I had uh, been asked to come alongside our, our local law enforcement and emergency responders and some of our state agencies uh, as a chaplain for their organizations. And so um, I, I, I wanted to do it, I wanted to help, I wanted to be an asset to our community as well as um, just be a presence of Christ in some, some very difficult and hard places. And so I agreed to do it. I got a little bit of training, not a lot, and um, not as much as I probably needed. And I'll never forget the very first time I was called upon to make a, a death notification because of an accident to go and inform a family that a lost one had passed. Um, I was desperately trying to say it in the kindest, softest, gentlest way I could. And so I was using all of these euphemisms, you know, about um, that they had, had been injured um, and they, they didn't make it and, and using all of and, and when I got done with my whole uh, speech about loving on them and trying to, wanting to be there for them, the family literally said, I don't understand, what do you mean? And the police officer I was with just said, your son died in a car accident. And so I had tried all of these ways to be light and gentle, but in the end, I hadn't actually communicated anything. And the officer, without being cruel, without being uh, insensitive in any way, just kind of cut right to the heart. And then, of course, I was there to help ease the family's pain and pray with them and do all those different kinds of things. But the first thing you have to do is you have to make sure um, that you're clear. And oftentimes, a hard conversation should start with, hey, what do you understand the expectation to be? Because you might find that you just have not clearly communicated your expectation in the first place. The other thing you can ask are questions like, hey, how are you doing? What's going on with you personally? You might find they're going through personal crisis at home. You might find there's some weird dynamics happening within the team that you are not aware of that they're having a hard time overcoming. And so a lot of times by asking questions first and making sure that you have clearly communicated your expectations, a lot of times that clears a lot of things up. And if a person can articulate to you what the expectations are, you could just follow up with asking a question like, how do you feel like you're doing? A lot of times they already know they're struggling, which means we don't have to come in there with a cudgel or a bomb and just blow things up or beat things to death. 
A lot of times they already know that's going on. And then you can say to them, hey, what have you, tried, what have you done to try to overcome this? Hey, what are some of the attempts that you've already made? How did those things work? Who have you leaned into? Who have you asked for help? So a lot of times having these conversations starts with clarifying the expectations, really understanding where they are, and then letting them be a part of the process of thinking about how can we get this thing back up to speed? How can we get this thing back up to standard? How can we get this thing back to where uh, we, we want uh, that, that process to be, that team to be, that group to be, that, that project to be, whatever it is that we're working on. And in the process of doing that, the thing that we always have to keep track of is that we are working with people, and especially in the church, we're working with volunteers. So these people have full-time vocational lives, they have full-time families, they have all of the other responsibilities associated with normal life, and they're above and beyond, they're coming in and trying um, to, to grow their faith and lean into the church and to the community and to the group or the team or whatever else. And we have to keep all that stuff in mind, which means we have to be patient. So um, we might think something should only take two weeks for someone to know, or I've told you twice, or I've told you three times. But the beautiful thing about Christ is that the, the things that he has revealed to us about himself really are the things he is wanting us to fold into our character. And so if Christ's mercies are new every morning, then, then we wanna make sure that we're creating plenty of space for people to have opportunities. And I'm not saying you should give people an infinite amount of opportunities if, they're, if their behavior is harming people or if people are falling through the gaps or if people are getting hurt. Sometimes you have to step in and help ensure that that doesn't happen. But you don't take away the opportunity until you've given people every opportunity possible uh, and all the grace available to learn and to grow into that area of responsibility. And even if from time to time you do have to ask someone to take a step back or you do have to take a little bit of responsibility off their plate because maybe it was too much all at once, the goal should be to see how quickly you can spin them back up to that level if they're still interested, if they're still willing to do that. And that takes tons and tons and tons of, of patience. So in Titus, one of um, Paul's other sons in the faith, and I do air quotes, because one of the beautiful things about Paul's life is Timothy really was a young man to Paul. And so he really uh, presented like a physical son. But Titus would have presented more like a dad. So Paul is mentoring a man that, that is much older than him, and yet he's training him and developing him. So, so anybody uh, in our orbit, anybody in our life could be someone that we are discipling and growing regardless of what their capacity or their, uh, their status might be in other areas of life as it comes to our faith and as in, into our leadership. So in Titus 3.9, Paul says this, he says, you don't get involved in foolish discussions about spiritual pedigrees or in quarrels or in fights uh, about obedience to Jewish law, right? All of this peripheral stuff that really isn't central to the gospel, that really isn't salvific. These things are useless and a waste of time. If people are causing divisions among you, give a first and a second warning, and after that, have nothing more to do with them. Now, I want to be clear. Paul is not actually advocating a two-strike rule here. What he's saying is, don't cut them off at the knees the first time they make a mistake. Give them a few chances. Now, if you get to the place where you really believe this is not a good faith actor, this person is acting in self-interest and not the interest of the team or the group or others, um, or this person's just their maturity or their, their competency uh, or their capacity, just is not a good fit for what I'm asking them to do. You don't want to leave them in that place because that's not kind either, right? You're doing harm to your group. You're doing harm to your team. You're doing harm to that individual. So you don't want to ask more of people than what they're really capable of wherever they are in their developmental cycle. But at the same time, you're going to give them grace. You're going to give them a first chance and a second chance and maybe even a third, fourth, fifth chance, uh, depending on your capacity for grace and their capacity for growth. So we, we have to lean in, right? We have to inspect what we expect. We have to be willing to have those hard and difficult conversations. We're always going to do it uh, with a, a, um, a character 
an, an understanding of being grace first, mercy first, the same way that Christ is with us, and be patient with people, but we're also going to be clear um, and we're going to have the conversation every single time. We're not going to uh, do it once and skip it once. We're going to be consistent if we're going to act, ask or expect uh, for consistency from others. And the more you do that, I promise you, the more fun you're actually going to have as a leader. I know that sounds weird because the least fun thing about leadership is having hard conversations. But if you'll learn to do it well, you'll find that you actually have less conflict, less frustration, less anxiety uh, in leading. And the people who you are leading will feel less anxious because they'll really know what it is you expect and, and they'll be experiencing consistency from you. Well, thanks for taking a couple minutes to talk with us today. If you have any questions, you can always reach out to us uh, here at the church. You can reach me, Jerry, at cometothewell.org, uh, or you can give us a call at the church, uh, 630-262-1083. I hope you have a great day, and God bless.